this COVID nonsense is all over, okay, when COVID's all over, um, yeah, so I used to play in the War Memorial Hyde Park, I used to play in the rain, and, I, I, and when I left school, I was still playing in the park, and I used to play for 20 cents a game, and uh, I've, I've mentioned this before, but one day I was playing chess in the park, and along comes this Yankee bloke with the Yankee accent. He has his chess clock, and he sat down. And he says, I'll play anybody for a dollar a game. He says, a dollar a game, you know. And um, I'm 70. I'm nearly 70. So this is uh, 50 years ago. This is about 50 years ago, right? And uh, anyways, this young bloke comes up and he's got with a Yankee accent. And he's got the chess clock and everything. So I'll play anybody for a dollar a game. And my friend Taffy, old Taffy, he was probably the one of the sharpest players. He was a hustler, but he was a good, good guy. He was a wonderful guy. And uh, well, he didn't hustle for money. Taffy was, I think, he was independently wealthy. Anyway. Um, Oh, Taffy said, I'll sponsor you for a dollar a game because you're good at lightning chess. You can beat this guy. And I said, I don't know. And he, I said, no, because I'm not going to risk my 20 cents. And he says, oh, he said, well, I'll, I'll pay a dollar a game. You just play two games, see how you go. The guy killed me. He gave me five minutes to one minute odds. So I only had one minute on, I had five minutes on the clock. He only had one minute. And then he tells me his name is, uh, Sean Brown. And I thought, Sean Brown. I thought, I don't know any Sean Brown. Later on, I went up to the chess club, St. John's Chess Club at King's Cross in Sydney. And um, and uh, I was watching the Australian Chess Championship with my friend Fred Flato. He was the Australian champion. Anyway, Sean Brown was there. Um, and uh, he wasn't the grandmaster then. But his name was, you know, Walter Sean Brown, Grandmaster Walter Sean Brown. That's who he was. Later on, he won the Australian Championship when I was there. So I beat, I played him in the park. He beat me up with the Volga Gambit, the Blumenfeld or the Burn Gambit or whatever. He smashed me to pieces. And um, and I thought, oh, my God, who's this guy? And anyway, so I went up to the chess club and the Australian Championship was being held. And Sean Brown won the tournament two and a half points clear of the field, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I'll tell you another story. So I'm up at the chess club and Sean Brown's sort of wandering around, walking around, parading around like a king and everything. He's a young bloke then, obviously. And he's actually born in Australia, but he went over to America, lived in America, and then he came back to Australia to, to try to win the Australian Championship so he could get on the road to Grandmaster. Anyway, um, uh, and he, won, he got his Grandmaster title after he left. But anyway, he's at the back of the tournament room, Grandmaster Brown, and he's wandering around parading himself with this pretty girl. Oh, she was stunning, right? Stunning girl. And uh, everyone's thinking, oh, God, he can play chess. He's a good-looking bloke. And he gets the good-looking women. So all the blokes are looking at him and everything. Anyway, in comes through the back of the, the church hall. It was a church hall, St. John's Church, King's Cross. So in the hall, they were that's where they were playing the Australian Championship. Anyway, in comes this other girl, this other model, and she looked like another stunner. And the two women started fighting. Yes, they started fighting over Sean Brown. The two women, there was scratching and clawing and carrying on and everything. And what, so he might have been a grandmaster. He might have been great at chess, but he wasn't very good at organising his time with the women. He actually, he made a mistake and he asked both of them to meet him there at the same time. But he probably thought one of them won't turn up. Maybe none of them will turn up. So I just asked both of them. Well, they both turned up. And they were scratching each other and fighting with each other in the chess hall. And all the people that were playing chess, you know, like it was a very serious game there way back in the in the 70s. And uh, this is early, about 1970 or something. Anyway, um, yeah, so they were all very, very serious at their chess boards. And suddenly you've got these two women scratching and fighting at the back. And all everyone's turning around. And Sean Brown, he not only won the tournament, 
but uh, he certainly, certainly gave us a lot of entertainment in Australia. He went back to America and uh, played in a lot of uh, uh, big tournaments overseas and stuff, and he had some great results. And I think he won the US Open Championship too. So there's a story about me going to St. Mary's Cathedral and um, playing chess in Hyde Park and meet in Hyde Park meeting Grandmaster Sean Brown when he was only a young man, long before he got his uh, International Master and Grandmaster title. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. So I'm going to play another game here. Who am I going to play? I might play um, Feli Pevozal. He's 21-32. He's one of our great friends from Brazil. I touched my f pawn, but I can't move it because it was behind my knight. So I'm just fianchettoing my knight, my bishop. <laughs> have, have you ever fianchettoed your knight? Well, I'm sure you have. Um... Uh, I'm going to hit, I could hit, I'm going to play pawn here. Now, remember I was telling you earlier, I said, oh, that, that bishop can be a real problem, so why not attack it? Oh, he knows the, how to play. The dirty, dirty, dirty dog. He knows how to play. So I'm just going to chase his bishop around. He's not happy because he was trying to hold his bishop. I'm just going to get my pieces working. And I'll take that bishop. And you can see it's a good idea to get rid of that bishop. It's a it's a pain in the butt, that bishop. And now we've just got an equal position. Um, 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 um. I'll take the pawn off. Uh, and I'll play knight here. So I've got my pieces working. I don't have to worry about my king position now. Normally, if the queen's on the board, um, the, the black king position uh, can be attacked through the white square weaknesses and everything. But now I don't have to worry about it, right? Because uh, um, it's okay. So I just castle, and uh, I should be all right because... It's pretty hard to attack that sort of position. It's just a generality, but uh, I might want to play knight takes pawn and get a perpetual check. Uh, cheeky bugger. Cheeky, cheeky boy. Cheeky boy. Cheeky boy. Cheeky boy. Okay. So um, what do I do? Well, I can hit his bishop. That's not a bad move. Just take his bishop. I might be putting his bishop on a good square. I don't want to put his pieces on good squares. But my knight's on a good square there. I like the knight there. It's a better square for the knight, isn't it? And now I can um, just get my bishop working. Can he play knight takes pawn? This is the problem. Can he play knight takes pawn? Well, I'm going to play rook to d d d d d d d8. Rook to d8. Now he can't play knight takes pawn. The combination's not playable. So we've got a completely different game now. Um, I can attack his knight. I can just attack his knight. So oh, my plan is to try to um, get my more peace activity. That's right. So my, my, my whole plan is to activate my pieces. Uh, um, his, his pieces are in a, um, a, a very, um, what's the word? There's a pawn there. Look, I can threaten that pawn. Look at that. I can threaten the pawn. That's good. Always good to threaten the pawn. If you can develop a piece and threaten the pawn at the same time, it's all good. I can play pawn here now and protect my knight. I don't want to move that knight. Okay, I'm still threatening that pawn, by the way. I'm still threatening that pawn. Aha, so now he holds it. Well, now that he's not threatening anything, I'll just play rook here and uh, improve my position a little bit. I think that's all right. I think it's okay. It's not a bad move. 
Yeah, so just go there. Okay, so now, what do we do now? Well, we can play Knight there. It doesn't do much, though. We might just go there. Um, I could change directions and pin his Knight over here. That's interesting. Oh, okay. So he doesn't like that. So I, I want to go up the middle anyway. That, that's my main idea was to, to go up the middle. I want some open lines for my pieces. So I want to take his knight and take his pawn in the middle. Right? Okay. I'll take. I'll do that. I'm going to follow up. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to attack something. Anyway, I'm opening up the game a little bit. And uh, I play rook. I'll take that pawn with check. It's still going to answer all the right questions. It's on there. Well, I could take his pawn, or I could just hit his knight. I hit his knight. Okay, so I'm just attacking his knight now. So I won't, I won't do anything too risque. But the point is, his king is in the middle. I've got his king parked in the middle of the board. And I'm threatening his knight, so it can't be too bad. I really am after a rook check. I want to get a rook check. So I'm going to attack his knight again, because I want to rook check him. And I can't check him with the knight in the way. But now I can bring this rook over with a big check, right? And now it's not easy for him. Now I've got another check here. Big question is, can we get him? Can we get him? Well, we can um, take, we can give him a knight check here. Take a rook. Take a knight. We're on his, on his rook. Give him a check. Run over here. Uh, but we've got, to, we've got to be careful. Because my king's a bit open. There's a check there. We've got, got another check. Always good to get a check, isn't it? Eh? But the position's probably a draw. So I'll go for a queen. Because I really want to get a queen. So I'll change rooks. And I'll play king up. I want to get a queen. But position is just a draw, I, I should think. I'm pushing my pawn forwards. Uh, now, I'll go here. I don't want his castle to come back. I don't want his castle to come back. My king's getting very close to success. Still threatening. Push my pawn.
Checkmate. Yes! What an end game. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that game. That was exciting. Wow, what a game. What a game of chess that was. Um, Zoofithic, it's still early in the day, he said. <laughs> All right, then. We're going to allow that. We're going to allow his threesome. I, I suppose a threesome is just a little bit different from four, a foursome. Um, because there's four-player chess, isn't there? I was raided yesterday by four-player chess. So um, being the innocent mind that I am, I was just thinking, well, a threesome, well, what would that be? Well, there's a foursome is four-player chess, so a threesome would probably be three people playing chess. Would that be right? There we go. Um, anyway, he, Illusion says, I play on my chess, so we understand that ratings are inflated compared to chess.com. He's around 1650 classical, 